Hey guys, Suze here. Welcome back to another What's for Dinner on Keto, Easy Keto Meal Ideas and Easy Keto Dinner Recipes. We film these keto recipe videos every single Sunday, or I should say we upload them every single Sunday, so we hope that you will consider subscribing to our channel and hitting that notification bell so that you never miss a single keto what's for dinner video series video we cooked up some really good easy keto recipes this week guys let's just go ahead and get into the video I wanna catch the rain. to start with we cooked up these barbecue chicken stuffed zucchinis they are so delicious so we added um, a third of a cup of this is actually sugar-free primal kitchen ketchup love it um, a fourth of a cup apple cider vinegar, two teaspoons of just regular yellow mustard, a teaspoon of onion powder, two tablespoons of swerve granulated, and then the recipe called for a fourth of a teaspoon of liquid smoke. I don't like smoky flavor, so but I do like smoked paprika, so I use that instead. And then two tablespoons of mayonnaise. I did use avocado oil mayo and two tablespoons of red onion, just minced really fine, I added to that. The recipe also called for two tablespoons of fresh cilantro. I'm not a huge cilantro fan, but I like a little, so I just added one tablespoon of dry cilantro. By the way, this recipe is inspired by one from I Breathe I'm Hungry. I really didn't follow her recipe very much at all because I left out a bunch of ingredients and changed some ingredients, but. I will link it down below in case you're interested. So once I had that mixed, I also added two cups of shredded chicken. This is just some chicken that I cooked in the Instapot ahead of time. It makes it so simple because then it just, you don't even have to work to shred it. It's just like done. So mix that all up. Of course, I added salt and pepper like I do to everything I cook. And then I took my zucchini. You see I only have five here. I was only gonna do two zucchini, but I'm glad it worked out the way it did because this was the perfect amount. But uh, while I was scooping the insides out, I lost a half in the trash can. So had to get another one and we ended up with five. So before I put it on the cookie sheet and stuffed them, I did microwave them for three minutes just to go ahead and start the softening process a little um, to get the right texture for when I baked them. So everybody likes their zucchini different. I like mine a little firm still but I want to be able to cut it like with a butter knife and fork. So anyway, then you just stuff it with your mixture. I shredded some pepper jack cheese and just topped it with that. And um, I baked these in the oven at 375 for 20 minutes to start with. But then when I checked them and took them out, um, you can see here when I kind of mashed them with my finger, <laughs> The, the texture was not where I would like it. I wanted it to be a little bit softer. So I did go ahead and put those back in the oven for another 10 minutes. So to get to where I, the texture that I like my zucchini, I microwaved them in the oven, I microwaved them for three minutes and then I baked them for a total of 30 minutes at 375. And these are the finished products. You can see when I checked the texture the second time, I loved it. And here they are all plated up. These were spectacular. I'm not a huge barbecue fan or barbecue chicken fan, but I do like vinegar-based barbecue, like country barbecue, like where I grew up. So I love the bite that the sauce actually had to it. I'll definitely be making this again. I was pleasantly surprised. Next up this week, I made a cast iron skillet stir fry um, keto Philly cheesesteak skillet dinner. And this is a recipe from Eating on a Dime. This was so good. I followed her recipe pretty much to almost to a T. Um, in a cast iron skillet. I actually bought this one on Amazon last year during the holidays for a really good deal. I will link it down below. I love it. I will also link the silicone mitt that I keep on the handle to keep from burning myself because it's just like instinct to grab a pot or pan handle when it's hanging out there. So I always keep that on. But anyway, I'm melting a couple tablespoons of butter in the skillet. And then I went ahead and pre- cut my veggies, so I'm just going to add a red bell pepper sliced up to this and a green bell pepper and half of a red onion 
And then on top of that, I'm adding two teaspoons of minced garlic. I just keep a huge container of this in the fridge at all times. And I'm just gonna start sauteing that until my vegetables get a little tender. And then I put a lid on it to help that process along. And once I get those to the texture that I would like, I just remove them to a separate dish and put some more butter in my skillet. So another couple tablespoons of butter. And then this is um, closer to two pounds than a pound and a half of a shoulder steak. The recipe called for flank around steak. I used um, some shoulder steak that I had just chilling in the freezer I needed to, to use up. Sliced it thin and went ahead and put it that in there. Once it was seared pretty well, I added a teaspoon of Italian seasoning to it. And of course, salt and pepper. And I let that cook. I did put a lid on this and turn the heat down to let the steak cook all the way through to temperature. And while that was going on, I went ahead and cut my oven to broil and just made a space here to put my veggies back in and combined it really well. And then I just took some regular provolone cheese. It took me seven slices to top this exactly how I wanted. But once I got that topped, I just popped it in the oven to broil. I don't know how long, no more than five minutes. Just long enough to melt the cheese all the way and get a tiny bit of brown on it. Uh, if I wasn't filming a cooking video, I would have let it go longer, but I was worried it might accidentally burn it. So there you go. Here it is all plated up. This was delicious. My toddler actually loved this meal. I was really surprised, um, but she ate it up. So big winner, and Philly cheesesteaks are always a winner for me. Next up are these mahi bites with some green bean fries on the side. This was a special request from my husband. So. To start with, I preheated my oven to 400. You've probably seen me make these before. I didn't use fresh green beans, a piss poor planning on my part. So thawed out frozen ones, patted them dry, unceremoniously put them into a dish with one egg and a little bit of water beat together. And then the other dish, I have Parmesan cheese and garlic powder mixed together and I just dumped them all in there. Look at this blob of mess I've got going on. But after I have them all fully coated, I do take them out one at a time and space them appropriately on this cookie sheet without touching each other. And I'm just gonna chill, you know, sit those to the side while I get working on the fish, but I did go ahead and preheat my oven to 400 because I'm gonna bake those. So for my fish, I used some wild caught mahi and it was frozen so I thawed it and then I just used some paper towels to try to get some of the excess water off of it and then I just sliced these into what would look like uh, fish nuggets fish sticks per se and I am gonna cook these in the air fryer this is based on a genius recipe by Carolyn Ketchum over at all day I dream about food I will link it down below I think she makes hers with cod, but I was craving mahi bites. So in a dish, I did change up the recipe a little too because I always do, but in a dish I combined a fourth of a cup mayo, a tablespoon of Dijon mustard, a tablespoon of brown mustard, brown spicy deli mustard, and two tablespoons of water. And then I took a cup and a half of pork rind crumbs. I always keep a bunch of these on hand. I just do them in the food processor. And to that I added three-fourths a teaspoon of Cajun seasoning and just kind of jiggled it around with my hand. I did preheat my air fryer at 400, so that's why I'm sitting it on a, a pot holder there. And I'm just gonna take the fish one piece at a time and dunk it in the, the uh, mayo mustard mixture and make sure you get the excess off. And then coat it really well with the pork rinds and go ahead and put those in my air fryer. You do want to make sure that the food in your air fryer is spaced apart really well so it'll cook all the way through. That's what it looked like when I got done. Now, she said to cook it for five minutes at a time and then turn them over. You see how a lot of my breading, um, even after spraying it, a lot of my breading came off when I did it like that. So for the second batch, I just did them for 10 minutes and at five minutes, I just like shook them and then 
you know, let it cook. And then I cooked my green beans for 10 minutes at 400. This is how it turned out. These were delicious. My husband special requested uh, like a fried fish kind of meal. So this is what it came up with. Next up is my favorite meal of the week. You know I make one heavy keto meal each week. This week it was keto meatball subs. Oh my goodness, I'm so in love with this recipe. So I found this recipe online from Simply So Healthy. I did not use her cooking methods at all because they just seemed really complicated. So I simplified it, but I will link the recipe down below. So you started with a pound of ground beef. I added to that a clove of crushed garlic, fourth a teaspoon dried basil, fourth a teaspoon dried oregano, fourth a teaspoon black pepper, and a half a teaspoon salt. And then I'm just mixing it up just like you would meatloaf or any other thing. I am gonna cook my meatballs in the air fryer because I just wanted the convenience of it. So you wanna have 16 meatballs because we're making four subs. And again, you want them spaced out appropriately. And I cooked these at 390 for 10 minutes in the air fryer. And halfway through, I just shook them. And while that was going, I put some of my dry ingredients together for my dough, just a cup and a half of almond flour, a teaspoon of xanthan gum, a fourth a teaspoon salt, a fourth a teaspoon dried oregano, and two teaspoons of baking powder, and just whisk those together. And then I made like a type of like fat head dough. I used her ingredients, but I used the microwave instead of a double broiler and all that. So I added um, two cups of mozzarella to a microwave safe dish and an ounce of cream cheese, and I microwaved it for one minute, stirred, microwaved it for 15 seconds, stirred, microwaved it for one more time at 15 seconds, and then it gave me this nice texture to work with here. And to that, I went ahead and added my dry ingredients and just used the spoon to mix and work that in all together somewhat <laughs> before adding an egg. And again, I used my spoon to work that in before using my hands to just really work this dough all the way out, knead it, you know, get it to the texture that I wanted. And then I just turned it out onto some parchment, covered it with another piece of parchment, and went ahead and tried to mash it into the shape of a rectangle, kind of the direction I wanted to go, and then used a rolling pin. This looks complicated. It really wasn't. It really didn't take that long. It took longer to film than anything. So you roll it out. It's kind of thinner on some sides and, you know, not shaped exactly how you want. This is what you do. You just roll it over, pick up pieces of dough, and move it where you want it. You know, you just got to work with it a little. Put your parchment paper back on, and then I just went sideways. Okay? Simple, simple, simple. So um, after I did that, I just cut it down the middle lengthways and um, or crossways into four equal rectangles and then on each of those I put a piece of provolone cheese and just cut them in half and put those on each one And then on top of each of those, I added four meatballs, and then I added a tablespoon of marinara sauce. This is a sauce that I always make in big batches and then freeze in cup-sized portions. I will link the recipe down below if you're interested, but just any low-carb um, sauce that you prefer. Put that over on each one. And once you have them all done, you're just gonna pinch the ends, the short side of each section of dough together and you know the middle is gonna fall out somewhat, but the ends will bake together and keep it all together, and then when you go to eat it, it'll just fold just like this right here. So you're gonna do that to each of them. And then I had some shredded pepper jack in the refrigerator left over from another recipe that I made during this week, and I wanted to use that up, so I just topped each of them with what I had left over of that. And then I baked these in the oven on 375 for 20 minutes. These were so good, they were everything I dreamed of. This is them out of the oven. Oh my gosh, this was my favorite, favorite, favorite meal of the week. 
I just served this up with a little side of super greens just because, you know, tomatoes, etc. So there you go, guys. That is this week's What's for Dinner on Keto video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, if you're new here, we really hope you will consider joining our crew and hitting that subscribe button. Also, if you have any recipes that are just favorites of yours that you would love to see a keto adaptation of, comment down below and let us know. We're always looking for new recipes. We um, love to get inspiration from others and are welcome and open to new keto food ideas. Till next week, see you later, guys. Don't beg your pardon. You're not someone's victim.